Welcome to Voralt Revolution. Dear friends, today we will share summary and example from the book The End of Jobs, Money, Meaning and Freedom Without the 9 to 5 by Taylor Pearson. The marketplace has altered as a result of fast technological advancements and globalization. It is making entrepreneurship more secure, accessible, and profitable than ever before, ushering in the end of jobs. It's easier than ever to start your own business, set your own hours, and take control of your life. Let's investigate why. Taylor Pearson explores the profound shifts occurring in the global job market, driven by technological advancements, globalization, and the rise of entrepreneurship. The book's overview sets the stage for understanding these changes and their implications for individuals and society. Imagine a bustling city in the early 20th century. Factories are the heart of the economy, providing stable jobs for thousands. People work long hours but find comfort in the predictability of their employment. Fast forward to the 21st century, and the landscape has drastically changed. Automation and artificial intelligence have taken over many of the tasks once performed by humans. Factories are now run by a handful of technicians overseeing robots. In this new world, John, a mid-level manager at a manufacturing plant, finds himself at a crossroads. His job, once secure, is now threatened by the very machines he helped implement. John realizes that the skills that once made him valuable are no longer enough. He decides to take a leap of faith and start his own business, leveraging his industry knowledge and network. John's journey is fraught with challenges. He faces financial uncertainty, the pressure of competition, and the steep learning curve of entrepreneurship. However, he also experiences the freedom and fulfillment that come with being his own boss. He learns to adapt, innovate, and continuously improve his business model. Through John's story, Pearson illustrates the broader theme of the book, the end of traditional jobs is not a catastrophe but an opportunity. It is a call to action for individuals to embrace change, develop new skills, and take control of their economic destiny. The overview serves as a wake-up call, urging readers to rethink their career paths and prepare for a future where adaptability and entrepreneurship are key to success. 1. You can do it. Steve Jobs remarked, everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you, and you can change it, you can influence it, you can build your own things that other people can use. Once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. People now have more power than at any other point in history to build their own lives and worlds. Consider Sarah, a graphic designer working for a large advertising agency. For years, she has felt stifled by the rigid corporate structure and the lack of creative freedom. Despite her talent and dedication, Sarah's contributions often go unnoticed, and she feels like just another cog in the machine. One day, Sarah stumbles upon Taylor Pearson's book, The End of Jobs. Intrigued by the idea that traditional jobs are becoming obsolete and that entrepreneurship is the way forward, she decides to take a leap of faith. Inspired by the You Can Do It section, Sarah begins to explore the possibility of starting her own design business. Sarah starts small, taking on freelance projects in her spare time. She leverages her existing network to find clients and uses social media to showcase her work. Initially, the transition is challenging. She faces self-doubt, financial uncertainty, and the pressure of managing all aspects of her business. However, Sarah is determined to succeed. As she gains more clients and builds her reputation, Sarah begins to see the fruits of her labor. She enjoys the creative freedom and the ability to choose projects that align with her passions. Her income grows, and she finds a sense of fulfillment that was missing in her corporate job. Through Sarah's journey, Pearson's message becomes clear, anyone can achieve success in the new economy by embracing entrepreneurship and leveraging their unique skills. The You Can Do It section serves as a motivational push, encouraging readers to take control of their careers and pursue their passions. The end of traditional jobs is not a crisis but an opportunity. It is a call to action for individuals to believe in themselves, take risks, and create their own paths to success. Pearson's message is one of empowerment, reminding readers that they have the potential to thrive in the new economy if they are willing to embrace change and take the entrepreneurial leap. 2. Let's look at globalization. 
In Vietnam, there is a woman named Na. She is trilingual, intelligent, and diligent. Her monthly payment is roughly $1,000. Employees in a variety of nations and areas may attest to this. India, China, and the Philippines are all known for producing clever English speakers capable of doing well at work. Many people associate outsourcing with manufacturing labor, but it has evolved into more. Any work that can be done entirely online, including those that need advanced degrees, may be outsourced for a small fee. You can search, recruit, and manage remote workers from anywhere in the globe if you have excellent Wi Fi. Platforms like Skype, Google Hangouts, and Slack make communicating with anybody, everywhere, quite simple. Imagine a small town in the Midwest where the local economy has long been dependent on a single manufacturing plant. For decades, this plant provided stable jobs and a sense of security for the community. However, as globalization accelerated, the plant faced increasing competition from overseas manufacturers who could produce goods at a lower cost. One day, the plant announces it will be shutting down, unable to compete with the cheaper labor and production costs abroad. This news sends shockwaves through the town. Families who have relied on these jobs for generations are now faced with uncertainty and fear for their future. Amidst this turmoil, we meet Tom, a skilled machinist who has worked at the plant for over 20 years. Tom is devastated by the news but decides to take a proactive approach. He recalls reading about the rise of global markets and the potential for small businesses to reach customers worldwide. Inspired by this idea, Tom decides to start his own business. Tom begins by researching global trends and identifying niche markets that are underserved. He discovers a growing demand for custom, high-quality machine parts that are not easily mass-produced. Leveraging his expertise and connections, Tom sets up a small workshop in his garage and starts producing these specialized parts. To reach a global audience, Tom creates an online store and uses social media to market his products. He also partners with international shipping companies to ensure his products can be delivered anywhere in the world. Slowly but surely, orders start coming in from different countries, and Tom's business begins to grow. Through Tom's journey, Pearson's message about globalization becomes clear. While it can disrupt traditional jobs, it also opens up new opportunities for those willing to adapt and innovate. The Let's Look at Globalization section highlights the importance of understanding global trends and leveraging them to create new business opportunities. The end of traditional jobs is not the end of opportunity. It is a call to action for individuals to embrace the changes brought about by globalization and to find new ways to thrive in a connected world. Pearson's message is one of resilience and adaptability, reminding readers that they have the power to shape their own futures in the global economy. 3. Technology on the Rise Software provided through the Internet manages many major organizations and sectors. We all know that technology is becoming more crucial in our lives. Still, the volume and breadth with which it is evolving are astonishing. According to predictions, up to 5 million people will own cell phones in the next decade. It provides practically every human on the planet access to the Internet whenever they want it. Technology is gaining traction. When was the last time you bought a CD from a record store? Demand has been stifled by services like iTunes, Spotify, and Pandora. Technology and globalization are both advancing at a rapid pace. Picture a bustling city in the early 2000s, where Sarah, a recent college graduate, lands her first job at a well-established publishing house. She is excited to start her career in an industry she loves. For years, Sarah works diligently, climbing the corporate ladder and honing her skills in editing and content creation. However, as the years pass, she notices a shift in the industry. Digital media and ebooks are becoming increasingly popular, and the demand for printed books is declining. One day, Sarah's company announces a major restructuring due to the rise of digital technology. Many of her colleagues are laid off, and Sarah is left wondering about her future. She realizes that the skills she has relied on for years are no longer enough in this rapidly changing landscape. Determined to stay relevant, Sarah decides to embrace the technological revolution. 
Sarah enrolls in online courses to learn about digital marketing, social media management, and ebook publishing. She starts a blog to share her insights on the publishing industry and builds a following on social media. Her newfound skills and online presence catch the attention of a tech startup looking for someone with her expertise. Sarah is offered a position as a digital content strategist, a role that didn't even exist a few years ago. In her new job, Sarah thrives. She uses data analytics to understand reader preferences, creates engaging digital content, and collaborates with a global team. The flexibility and innovation of the tech industry invigorate her, and she finds herself more passionate about her work than ever before. Through Sarah's journey, Pearson's message about the rise of technology becomes clear. While it can disrupt traditional jobs, it also creates new opportunities for those willing to adapt and learn. The Technology on the Rise section highlights the importance of staying ahead of technological trends and continuously updating one's skills. The end of traditional jobs is not the end of opportunity. It is a call to action for individuals to embrace technological advancements and leverage them to create new career paths. Pearson's message is one of resilience and adaptability, reminding readers that they have the power to thrive in a technology-driven world if they are willing to embrace change and continuously learn. 4. Why MBAs and JDs Can't Get Jobs According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the unemployment rate was still 11.2% six years after the recession ended. Why? Because many occupations are being outsourced or replaced by machines. Even for those with a master's degree, finding work is challenging. Everyone can understand and agree that there is a labor scarcity for highly qualified employees, but no one appears to know why. Dave Snowden created the Cunovan framework after researching the management structure at IMB. Work is divided into four groups, difficult, complicated, chaotic, and simple. Easy and hard tasks may be broken down into simple step-by-step -step instructions making them teachable. This is where our present educational system is mostly focused. The times, however, have changed. Understanding how to follow instructions and use best practices isn't as important. Because complicated and chaotic systems are in high demand, you must comprehend them. Imagine a prestigious university campus in the early 2000s. Students are bustling between classes, filled with the promise of lucrative careers awaiting them after graduation. Among them is Alex, a bright and ambitious student pursuing an MBA. Alex has always believed that an MBA is a ticket to a high-paying job and a successful career in the corporate world. Fast forward to graduation day. Alex, armed with a shiny new MBA, eagerly enters the job market. However, the reality is starkly different from what Alex had envisioned. Despite applying to numerous companies, Alex struggles to secure a job. The positions that were once abundant for MBA graduates are now scarce, and the competition is fierce. Alex's friend, Emily, is in a similar predicament. Emily has just completed her JD and is ready to embark on a career in law. However, she finds that many law firms are downsizing or automating tasks that were traditionally done by junior lawyers. The demand for new JDs is not as high as it once was, and Emily faces an uphill battle to find a position. Both Alex and Emily begin to question the value of their expensive degrees. They realize that the job market has shifted dramatically. Companies are looking for skills that are not necessarily taught in traditional MBA or JD programs. They want employees who are adaptable, tech-savvy, and capable of thinking creatively to solve complex problems. Determined to adapt, Alex and Emily decide to pivot their careers. Alex starts learning about digital marketing and data analytics, skills that are in high demand. Emily, on the other hand, explores opportunities in legal tech, a burgeoning field that combines her legal expertise with technology. Through online courses and networking, Alex and Emily acquire new skills and begin to see opportunities they hadn't considered before. Alex lands a job at a tech startup, where his business acumen and new digital skills are highly valued. Emily joins a legal tech firm, where she helps develop software that automates routine legal tasks, making legal services more accessible. Their journeys illustrate Pearson's argument 
the traditional paths to success, such as obtaining an MBA or JD, are no longer as reliable as they once were. The job market is evolving, and individuals must be willing to adapt and acquire new skills to stay relevant. The Why MBAs and JDs Can't Get Jobs section highlights the importance of continuous learning and the ability to pivot in response to changing economic conditions. The end of traditional jobs is not the end of opportunity. It is a call to action for individuals to embrace change, seek out new skills, and create their own paths to success in a dynamic and unpredictable job market. Pearson's message is one of resilience and adaptability, reminding readers that they have the power to thrive if they are willing to evolve with the times. 5. Know Your Limits Limits play a crucial part in every system, from our daily lives to the functioning of economies. If you're seeking to expand your business, you'll inevitably run into a major roadblock. If you have a fantastic product that no one knows about, upgrading it won't help you sell it. You should work on your marketing. While our initial inclination is to try harder, it is more important to figure out where to push. To figure this out, consider the following questions. What's the deal with the system? What is the current restriction? What's the most obvious approach to make the limit better? The workforce's boundaries are shifting. We are not in the midst of a global recession, rather, we are moving between two economic periods. Investing more heavily in what has traditionally worked will not enhance the outcome when the economy shifts. It's up to you to figure out how to raise the limit. Imagine a bustling city where David, a talented software developer, works for a large tech company. David is known for his coding skills and has always dreamed of starting his own tech startup. Inspired by stories of successful entrepreneurs, he decides to take the plunge and leave his stable job to pursue his dream. David's initial excitement quickly turns into a whirlwind of challenges. He realizes that running a startup requires more than just technical skills. He struggles with marketing, sales, and managing finances. Despite his best efforts, the startup fails to gain traction, and David finds himself overwhelmed and burnt out. Feeling defeated, David reflects on his journey and realizes that he had underestimated the importance of understanding his own limits. He had assumed that his technical expertise alone would be enough to ensure success. Determined to learn from his mistakes, David decides to take a different approach. David reaches out to his network and finds a co-founder, Lisa, who has a strong background in business and marketing. Together, they complement each other's skills and create a balanced team. David focuses on the technical aspects of the startup, while Lisa handles the business side. This division of labor allows them to play to their strengths and address their weaknesses. With their combined expertise, the startup begins to thrive. They secure funding, attract customers, and grow their team. David learns that knowing his limits and seeking help in areas where he lacks expertise was crucial to their success. Through David's journey, Pearson's message about knowing your limits becomes clear. Recognizing and respecting your own strengths and weaknesses is essential in the new economy. The Know Your Limits section highlights the importance of self-awareness and collaboration in achieving success. The end of traditional jobs is not the end of opportunity. It is a call to action for individuals to understand their own capabilities and seek out partnerships that can help them succeed. Pearson's message is one of humility and strategic thinking, reminding readers that they have the power to thrive if they are willing to acknowledge their limits and work collaboratively. 6. The Emergence of the Entrepreneur Because of globalization, you are no longer vying to be more knowledgeable than your neighbor, but rather with 7 billion individuals all over the world. More than half of recent college graduates in the United States are either unemployed or employed in jobs that do not need a bachelor's degree. Knowledge is no longer considered a precious resource. Nonetheless, since the 1940s, the number of college graduates has gradually grown. If more college degrees aren't cutting it, perhaps more entrepreneurship is the way to go. We're at a crossroads between knowledge-based and entrepreneurial work. Those who invest extensively in entrepreneurship will reap the greatest rewards. Entrepreneurship, like stock in a firm or knowledge certificates, is a skill set that can be learned. There is no way to quantify entrepreneurship, instead, do whatever you can to increase your entrepreneurial abilities. 
take chances, innovate, and take the initiative. This is the perfect moment to start your own business. Globalization and the employment movement are driven by better communications, technology, and educational standards. This makes it simpler and less expensive for entrepreneurs to identify, hire, and manage competent team members. Entrepreneurship is now more accessible, safer, and profitable than ever. We often postpone making decisions not because the conclusion is undesirable but because the outcome is unknown. However, after some thought, you'll realize that the worst-case situation isn't quite as horrible as it appears. Imagine a bustling city in the early 21st century. The corporate world is thriving, and people are flocking to secure stable jobs in large companies. Among them is Michael, a young professional who has just landed a job at a prestigious consulting firm. Michael is excited about his future, believing that climbing the corporate ladder is the key to success. However, as the years pass, Michael begins to feel disillusioned. The long hours, office politics, and lack of creative freedom take a toll on him. He notices that despite his hard work, his contributions often go unrecognized, and his career progression is slower than he had hoped. Michael starts to question whether the traditional corporate path is truly the best way to achieve his goals. One day, Michael stumbles upon Taylor Pearson's book, The End of Jobs. Intrigued by the idea that entrepreneurship is becoming more accessible and profitable, he decides to explore this new path. Inspired by the The Emergence of the Entrepreneur section, Michael begins to see the potential of starting his own business. Michael starts by identifying a niche market that aligns with his passions and skills. He notices a growing demand for personalized fitness coaching, driven by the rise of health-conscious consumers and advancements in wearable technology. Leveraging his background in consulting and his passion for fitness, Michael decides to launch an online fitness coaching platform. The journey is not easy. Michael faces numerous challenges, from securing funding to building a customer base. However, he is determined to succeed. He uses social media to market his services, creates engaging content to attract clients, and continuously improves his platform based on user feedback. Slowly but surely, his business begins to grow. Through Michael's journey, Pearson's message about the emergence of the entrepreneur becomes clear, the traditional job market is no longer the only path to success. The rise of technology and globalization has created new opportunities for individuals to leverage their unique skills and passions to build successful businesses. The The Emergence of the Entrepreneur section highlights the importance of adaptability, creativity, and resilience in this new economy. The end of traditional jobs is not the end of opportunity. It is a call to action for individuals to embrace entrepreneurship and take control of their economic destiny. Pearson's message is one of empowerment, reminding readers that they have the potential to thrive in the new economy if they are willing to embrace change and take the entrepreneurial leap. 7. Don't be a turkey. Every day, a butcher feeds a turkey, leading the turkey to assume that the habit will continue. It is provided and cared for regularly, and it has no reason to suspect differently. But, by Thanksgiving Day, we all know what happens. Don't make the mistake of being a turkey. We presume jobs are secure now because they have always been safe, not because there is reason to believe they will be safe in the future. The longer the market continues without a correction, the greater the subsequent correction. The longer we go without diversity or unpredictability in our jobs and businesses, we acquire more underlying risk. What was once secure is now dangerous. What was formerly unsafe has now become safe. Imagine a bustling city where Emma, a diligent accountant, works for a large corporation. For years, Emma has enjoyed a stable job with a predictable routine. She receives regular promotions and pay raises, and her future seems secure. Emma's life is much like that of a turkey being fed daily, growing more confident in its safety with each passing day. However, Emma's sense of security is shattered when her company announces a major restructuring due to advancements in artificial intelligence and automation. Many accounting tasks are now being handled by sophisticated software, and Emma's role is deemed redundant. She is laid off, along with many of her colleagues. Feeling blindsided and unprepared, Emma reflects on her situation. 
she realizes that she had become complacent, relying on the stability of her job without considering the potential for disruption. Determined not to be caught off guard again, Emma decides to take control of her career. Emma begins by assessing her skills and identifying areas for growth. She enrolls in courses on data analytics and financial technology, fields that are less likely to be automated. She also starts networking with professionals in emerging industries to stay informed about new opportunities. As Emma gains new skills and expands her network, she discovers a job opening at a fintech startup. Her background in accounting, combined with her new expertise in data analytics, makes her an ideal candidate. She secures the position and finds herself in a dynamic and innovative environment where she can continue to learn and grow. Through Emma's journey, Pearson's message about the turkey problem becomes clear, relying on past stability can lead to vulnerability in the face of unexpected changes. The Don't Be a Turkey section highlights the importance of staying vigilant, continuously learning, and preparing for potential disruptions. The end of traditional jobs is not the end of opportunity. It is a call to action for individuals to remain adaptable and proactive in their careers. Pearson's message is one of resilience and foresight, reminding readers that they have the power to thrive if they are willing to anticipate change and prepare for the unexpected. 8. How Entrepreneurs Are Getting Rich A Businessman Throwing Money Up in the Air, Showing That He Is Getting Rich www.streamlinehq.com The long tail's three key causes have fueled this transition, making entrepreneurship more accessible than ever before. The democratization of the tools of production. The cost of producing a product is reducing. You can now manufacture things in China at a low price. You can communicate with the factory effectively. Creating exceptional items is less expensive and easier. Democratization of distribution. Everyone today owns a smartphone. With some effort, everyone can go to the market. Every day, new distribution avenues spring up. What used to cost thousands of dollars in advertising is now simply and affordably available to you. New markets are revealed every day. The internet has altered the norms, and new markets and enterprises are emerging daily. Geographical location is no longer significant. Anyone, wherever in the globe, can conduct business with you. As new markets appear, there will be increasing individuals to sell to. Imagine a small town where Jane, a recent college graduate with a degree in marketing, is struggling to find a job. The traditional job market is saturated, and despite her qualifications, Jane faces rejection after rejection. Frustrated but determined, she decides to take a different path. Jane recalls reading The End of Jobs and is particularly inspired by the section on how entrepreneurs are getting rich. She decides to start her own business, leveraging her marketing skills and the power of the internet. Jane notices a growing trend in eco-friendly products and decides to create a line of sustainable, handmade cosmetics. Jane begins by researching her target market and identifying the best platforms to reach her audience. She sets up an online store and uses social media to promote her products. Jane also starts a blog to share her journey and educate her audience about the benefits of sustainable living. Her authentic and engaging content quickly attracts a loyal following. To scale her business, Jane adopts the stair-step method Superscript 1, a strategy Pearson describes where entrepreneurs start with small, manageable projects and gradually take on more complex ventures. Jane begins by selling her products locally and reinvesting her profits to expand her product line and reach a wider audience. Jane also leverages the long-tail superscript one of the internet, a concept that allows niche products to find their market through online platforms. By targeting a specific audience interested in eco-friendly products, Jane is able to compete with larger brands and carve out her own space in the market. As her business grows, Jane reinvests her profits into improving her products and expanding her reach. She collaborates with influencers, attends trade shows, and continuously innovates to stay ahead of market trends. Her dedication and strategic approach pay off, and Jane's business becomes a success, generating significant wealth. Through Jane's journey, Pearson's message about how entrepreneurs are getting rich becomes clear 
by leveraging technology, understanding market trends, and adopting innovative business models, individuals can create wealth and achieve financial independence. The How Entrepreneurs Are Getting Rich section highlights the importance of adaptability, strategic thinking, and continuous learning in the modern economy. The end of traditional jobs is not the end of opportunity. It is a call to action for individuals to embrace entrepreneurship and take control of their economic destiny. Pearson's message is one of empowerment, reminding readers that they have the potential to thrive in the new economy if they are willing to innovate and take calculated risks. In summary, the internet enabled intelligent and motivated people to establish a business. How to wade into entrepreneurship Entrepreneurs with great contacts and valuable skill sets are successful. Some of the abilities you'll need, on the other hand, will have to be learned the hard way, by doing them. You'll need to understand how to manage contractors and workers, their moods and emotions, and how to cope with and overcome nervousness associated with new product launches and sales calls. You'll also need to figure out how to build and maintain relationships with other business owners. Having an entrepreneurial network will be extremely beneficial to you. There are two ways to establish a company. The stair-step method. The initial stage in this technique is to create a one-time fee product with a single marketing channel, SEO paid advertising such as Google AdWords, a blog readership, or Amazon.com. You can start expanding your business once you've built and launched one product. Step 2 is to launch enough items to recoup your time investment. Step 3 is expanding your company and introducing new products or services. With this method, you may dip your toes in the water and progressively wade into entrepreneurship. Stair-stepping allows you to gain momentum in your career path by honing the abilities you'll need to operate a business. It also allows you to cultivate partnerships. Apprenticeships Apprenticeships are another option. The principle is simple, you identify someone doing what you want to be doing in 5 to 10 years. You strike a bargain with them, I'll work for you for a low wage in exchange for access to the inner workings of your company. Apprenticeships have several advantages. You'll develop friendships and gain experience. At someone else's expense, you'll be able to investigate the market. Rather than paying for law school or an MBA, you may get compensated for developing talents and cultivating valued relationships in the marketplace. In summation, technology has reduced the cost of producing something, made it simpler to reach new markets, and created new consumers eager to buy it. Just as jobs are getting more competitive, entrepreneurship is becoming more accessible. Entrepreneurship is now more accessible than ever before. 9. Money, Freedom, and Meaning According to research, humans are motivated by money, freedom, and significance. Profit is merely the difference between a living thing's consumption and output. An 8-hour workday generates earnings, allowing you to sleep for the remaining 16 hours. Profit is separated into two categories, the slow lane, which includes work, and the fast lane, entrepreneurship. People in the slow lane acquire secure employment, pay off debt, invest 10% of their income in the stock market, and watch it compound over time. Jobs are essentially related to time in this approach. Your income potential is connected to your time, whether it's $600,000 per year or $8 per hour. The emphasis in the fast lane is on swiftly accumulating assets that expand without requiring constant intervention. Exponential growth is conceivable in this scenario since they have complete control over all factors. There is no limit to how much you may earn, compared to having a job. Assume you have a job and are given a $50,000 increase. That's fantastic. Because of the multiple, you add $50,000 to your pocket and $100,000 in asset value to your net worth if you do the same in a firm. Improve traffic, get more traffic to sell more units, economics, raise unit pricing, or conversions. Of the visitors we have, more are converted to sales-sell more units, to increase the amount of money any firm produces. All of these variables are completely within your control, and your company may expand as much as you desire. The total of all potential values for a random variable, multiplied by the chance of occurrence, is the expected value. It's how company owners think about their operations and make choices. No option is ever guaranteed to materialize. 
but if you seek possibilities with a good anticipated value in an organized manner, you will ultimately succeed. You could believe that achieving independence is harder, yet this is not the case. It's very feasible that the amount of freedom you may succeed in your life will exceed your greatest dreams. Rather than picking from a list of alternatives, come up with your own. The entrepreneur establishes fact, he is not defined by it. Those who create reality have a more pleasant life, greater freedom, and more money. Meaning is the third motivator. Consider the times in your life when you felt the happiest. When you were so focused on something that you didn't realize for hours had passed, what were some of the times? Those were the times when you were both challenged and inspired. We produce better work when we spend our time working on a select task. People perform their finest job when looking for something more as an entrepreneur. Money isn't always the most powerful drive. It is meaningful labor. And, more often than not, greater significance equates to more money. Mark Zuckerberg met with Yahoo investors in 2006 to discuss the possibility of purchasing Facebook. But, in Zuckerberg's perspective, the money would merely be used to build another social networking site. He loved the one he had before and thought it worthwhile to work on it. As a result, he turned down the proposal, and Facebook currently has a market capitalization of over $230 billion. Meaning makes us happy and more prosperous. For the first time in history, entrepreneurship is more lucrative and synergistic than ever before in the quest for money, purpose, and freedom. Imagine a bustling city where Mark, a mid-level manager at a large corporation, spends his days in a cubicle, working long hours for a steady paycheck. Despite his financial stability, Mark feels trapped in a monotonous routine. He dreams of having more control over his time and finding work that truly excites him. One evening, Mark stumbles upon Taylor Pearson's book, The End of Jobs. Intrigued by the promise of a life filled with money, freedom, and meaning, he decides to explore the idea of entrepreneurship. Inspired by the stories of successful entrepreneurs in the book, Mark begins to envision a different future for himself. Mark starts by identifying his passions and skills. He has always been interested in technology and has a knack for solving problems. He decides to create a software solution that helps small businesses manage their operations more efficiently. With a clear vision in mind, Mark begins to work on his startup in his spare time. The journey is challenging. Mark faces financial uncertainty, long hours, and the pressure of building a business from scratch. However, he also experiences a newfound sense of freedom. He can set his own schedule, work on projects he is passionate about, and make decisions that align with his values. As Mark's business grows, he begins to see the financial rewards of his hard work. His software gains traction, and he starts to generate significant revenue. More importantly, Mark finds meaning in his work. He receives feedback from small business owners who tell him how his software has transformed their operations and improved their lives. Through Mark's journey, Pearson's message about money, freedom, and meaning becomes clear. Traditional jobs often fail to provide these elements, but entrepreneurship offers a path to achieving them. The Money, Freedom, and Meaning section highlights the importance of taking control of one's career and pursuing work that aligns with personal values and passions. The end of traditional jobs is not the end of opportunity. It is a call to action for individuals to embrace entrepreneurship and create a life filled with financial independence, personal freedom, and meaningful work. Pearson's message is one of empowerment, reminding readers that they have the potential to thrive in the new economy if they are willing to take risks and pursue their dreams. Thank you for listening. I hope this content is useful to you. If you like this kind of content, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel to support our team.